Welcome to the Faculty of Computer Science and ICT. As part of this presentation, I'm discussing computer science with you. Before that, however, I feel it pertinent to give you a little bit of background about myself. I'm Keith Allen, Head of Faculty at Rather Comprehensive. I've been teaching for a relatively short time frame. I've been doing it at the time of this video for 10 years. Nine of those years heading up the faculty at Rada Comprehensive. Before that, however, I spent over 20 years as a commercial software developer, specializing in Oracle Forms, Reports, PLSQL, and indeed SQL. Additionally, I have extensive experience in Java and Visual Basic. My staff also have extensive commercial experience, which we bring to the teaching room on a daily basis. That quote behind me, very, very true. The choices you make today are going to be with you for a very, very long time. You need to make sure, you need to make sure the choice you make is the best choice for you and meets your requirements going forward. As I said, this is a very important time for you. You are looking at making choices. As a faculty, we offer two paths. Two very, very different, two very, very unique paths. There's no similarity between, between either of them. Some pupils often say, can I do both of them? Yes, you can. I wouldn't recommend it because you're putting both eggs in one basket. However, if you chose to, you could take both of these in year 12. BTEC IT is one of the subjects we offer. Now, in this presentation, I'm not talking about that. If you want to find out about the BTEC in IT, you need to watch the presentation by our very own Brad Pitt, Mr. Bracey. Uh, he has presented that in another video. It's often been said, it's often been said, Bracey puts the B in BTEC. <laughs> I suggest you watch the video to find out whether that's true or not. As I said, I'm discussing this subject behind me. Very heavily programming orientated. If you enjoy programming, you're going to love computer science. If you don't, <laughs> don't even consider it. Don't even entertain your head of doing it, okay? You need to be interested in programming. Course requirements are that. But specifically, we specify that. There is quite a bit of maths in this course. Having a BA in mathematics shows me you're logical and you're methodical. If, however, you've sat GCSE computer science with an A or an A star or a very high B, then we can probably renegotiate on that entry requirement. But in the immediate term, you need to have a grade B in computer science or mathematics. So computer science. You can see immediately there are five units, two in year 12, Three in year 13. Right, year 12. First of all, the first unit is worth a full quarter of the qualification and it ends in a two hour written exam in the main hall. As part of this, we study a number of different things. We study the architecture of your PC, understanding how it works, how it runs, how the parts link together, why the parts link together, how you can upgrade your PC, make it better, make it run more efficiently. We understand laws around the use of computers, the Computer Misuse Act the Data Protection Act, etc. We then move on to algorithms and a very large section on programming. We strip everything back. We start back to bare bones, bare basic, and teach you how I think you should be taught programming. You're taught how to do it effectively and efficiently from day one. You then move on to unit two. This results in a WJEC set problem and it's a two hour on screen exam with 15% of the qualification. Historically, Pupils in this subject do exceedingly well. If you've been in RADA since year 7, you've taught, been taught VB from year 7, year 8, year 9, year 10, year 11, and year 12. Historically, pupils in RADA do phenomenally well in this on-screen programming exam, as mentioned, with 15% of the overall qualification. That brings year 12 to a close. You then move on to Unit 3 in year 13, again resulting in a two-hour exam. For this task unit now, however, we look at data structures. We look at logical operations, so and, or, not. We look at algorithms and programs. We look at systems design, the best way of designing a system for a user requirement or a user need. Predominantly a software kind of emphasis. You'll then, after having done that, move on to unit number four. Again, a theory element resulting in a second two-hour exam in year 13. So you can see in year 13, You've got two two-hour exams, whereas in year 12, only one exam. In this, we look at more kind of hardware emphasis. So we look at data transmission. What hardware do you need to make a network? In previous years, we've made a network. We've networked PCs together and had a game quick with the PCs, or the network, sorry, that you've built. We pick across the network. We improve efficiency of that network. We then move on to unit five. This 
is the unit that pupils love. It's worth 20% of the qualification. 20% is in fact an actual full grade. This is worth a full grade. It's a pupil set problem. Pupils go out, find problems that they can create a solution for. We've had a whole host of nif different kinds of problems, ranging from creating on-screen calendars to, tr to creating track configurations for um, a, a, rain a rain club, um, a, a, a toy train club. Um, we've had people doing trackers for clients working for CSE and Vodafone. We've had people down in Cardiff University creating a tracker for pharmacists. The diversity of topics created, of systems created, has been significant. But ultimately, you will design that system, you will develop a system, and you will test your own system. We've been told by universities that the real world skills that pupils achieve by doing that project are remarkable. You get to meet the client, you discuss things with the client, you make a prototype with the client, you take that prototype further, you develop a system. Okay, so you liaise with the client at every step of the way and you are developing real world skills in any language you choose to see fit. That listing there, that's a pretty comprehensive list of programming languages. We're able to support each and any single one of those. Unlike other schools, we won't force you to go and do Python. If you come, you'll come and see me and say, sir, this is my problem. Together, we'll sit down and work out the best programming language to find a solution to the problem that you've brought to me. If you say, sir, I want to make a web interface, brilliant. We'll go off and we'll do PHP, MySQL, CSS. If you say, sir, I want to make a desk-based application, okay, brilliant. Let's do VB, let's do Object, let's do C Sharp, whatever. The point here is, the point here is you won't be forced to do a language you can use the language that's the best language suited to the problem that you've got. That is a bold statement. As you remember from earlier, I have extensive commercial experience. All my staff have extensive commercial experience. We're able to bring that something to the classroom that most other schools can only dream of. They can only dream of this experience. Pupils love this experience and they earn, they, they learn lots from it. Okay, choices. What are you going to use as the basis to decide your A-levels on? Well, I think, I think really, there should be three things that you should use to base your A-level choices on. Faculty results, how good are the faculty results? Do they do, well, do they do well? Or do pupils nearly always fail when studying this subject? Can I get a university? Can I get a job or an apprenticeship? I think these three things are vitally important. With that in mind, how good are the faculty results in computer science? Well, they are phenomenal. Additionally, we are a center of excellence in computing. As part of my job, I'll go around the school and I'll teach teachers how to deliver computer science effectively and efficiently. As I said, we are a center for excellence. This next statistic is quite incredible. 98% of pupils go on and do something at university. That retention ratio is remarkable. I'm not aware of any other faculty in a school that can boast that retention ratio for pupils studying the qualification and going on. That, I believe, is your first reason to choose an A-level. You might enjoy doing A, B, C, G, C, S, E. If the faculty fails, you're on, you're off, you'd be a mug to go and do that A-level choice. Okay, let's imagine you decide, nah, I'm not going to base my A-level choices on how good the faculty does. I don't care. How about, can you get into university to do an apprenticeship or a degree? Can you get in to achieve one of these? What I'm going to show you in a moment is a very small selection, very, very small selection of these universities called the Russell Group. These are the best in the UK. And these say computer science would be useful to have. Again, it's very, very diverse range of topics. That list on there is nowhere near complete. That's a very, very small snippet. And interestingly, interestingly, on large parts of those, I know for a fact on architecture, chemical, chemical and civil engineering, chemistry, dentistry, maths, geology and geography, I know for a fact as part of those degree choice um, subjects, you're doing computing in year one. 
for a fact, 100%, we're doing programming. If you've sat A-level comp say, you're at an advantage. If you haven't, who knows? That's your second reason, as far as I'm concerned, for making your A-level choices. How good do the faculty do? Can I take it further to university? And for me, the third one, the big one, can you get a job? Is this A-level worthy of getting me a decent job? Computing, really? Let's be honest, you're going to be walking into a job in computing. Organisations are increasing their IT spend this year. This is taken from Forbes magazine for the next three to five years. And they say that. New tech projects. Additionally, staff are needed. And in what projects? What are these projects that are going to have all this extra expenditure? Well, we're looking at things like this. Application development, business intelligence, mobile, mobile solutions, risk, security, okay, and cloud adoption. What do all of those things have in common? Computing. Every single one of those has computing in common. So, you've now seen faculty results, chances or likelihood of getting onto university course, employability. Those are the reasons that I believe you should use to base your choices. If you don't do that, then clearly I think you're thinking with your heart, not your brain. And these, I'm going to show you, are what I think are wrong reasons for making your A-level choices. These are actual reasons. I haven't made them up. These are actual reasons that pupils have given to me in the past for making their A-level choices. They soon realise they're wrong, and sometime around November, December, they jump ship and go somewhere else. But these are actual reasons, wrong reasons. Really? You're going to base your A-level choice on whether a teacher is likeable? Okay, you need to enjoy a lesson, but does it really, really matter? This one's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, have fun in lesson, great. But don't do a subject because a teacher wears a big red nose and big, red, big feet and can juggle in a class. That's insane. That's madness. You don't do that. You won't believe how often I get pupils choosing a subject based entirely on what their friend is doing. This one, that's brilliant. That's great. Until they fall out. Until they're no longer a couple and they have to spend two years in the same room with one another and they pretty much hate one another. Okay? It's, it's, it's insane. And this last one, Oh man, we see that all the time. I don't know what to do. I've done this, this and this. I'll just put that one down. Please, please, don't, don't do that. These choices are with you for a very, very long time. They're with you for a long time. So make sure you choose the subjects that fit you the best. Right. Well, a number of things. First and foremost, you need to be talking. Talk to myself, talk to the staff within the faculty. Talk to pupils doing the course now. They will tell you what's and all, whether it's rubbish. They will tell you, oh, no, it's terrible or hopeless. Oh, yes, yeah, amazing, it's brilliant. Speak to people that are doing the course now, because as I said, they will give you the truth, what's and all. Additionally, you need to go out and do your own research. Find out how strong our faculty are. Find out how good the results are. Doing your own research will prove what I'm telling you is actually true. So, summary, BTEC IT, as I said earlier, Mr. Bracey put the B in BTEC, check out his video, it's pretty impressive, and I think you might like the course, it's a very, very, very popular course. And then A-level computer science, one of the harder A-levels in the school, pupils often do computer science in conjunction with maths, chemistry and physics, that's the norm. So there's the two parts. This next thing is a bit cheesy. Mm. it's also true, we're not going to be going away. If anything, computing and IT will get more prevalent as time goes on. They certainly will not be falling by the wayside. And that, my good people, is that. End of the presentation. If you have any questions, please find me an email. It's k.allen, that's A-L-L-E-N, k.allen at radar.net. Hopefully, I can help you. And maybe, just maybe, we will see you in year 12. Have a great day.